we're going to be looking at this idea of using spread. So first of all, here it is. Here is the kick drum without spread. So I'm going to uncomment uh, the code and now we're going to listen to it with the spread. So the spread basically uses if, if these conditions are true, then execute. Otherwise, don't play anything. They will still do the sleep, but they won't do anything else. Okay, so that actually results in a radically sort of different kick drum programming. With this code that I pasted in here, it's much more for a melodic part. So we've got three notes, F, E flat, and C. Uh, we don't need to pan on one side because this has come from a larger project. So I'll, uh, I'll just put it straight down the middle. Um, and with the spread parameter, what we're looking at here are these two numbers, three and eight. What the spread parameter does is that it gives you, it, it basically fills um, eight beats and distributes three uh, events across those eight beats. So this leads towards this idea known as Euclidean um, patterns or U Euclidean algorithms. Now what I also have here is a, is a tick that is a separately defined tick via this mechanism here than this tick over here. So they're completely different ticks. Um, but for the time being, I just don't want to make it more complex than it probably is already at the moment. So I'm just going to slow this down, first of all, make it a sleep of one. So we've got a spread of three, eight. So you can hear when it sort of loops itself around. Let's try it at 0 0.5, get it a little bit faster. So that's a very familiar pattern. That's a, a, a clave. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Let's change it to two, eight. So what we have here is basically because I've got three notes, it still makes the two sort of spread feel slightly odd. If I get rid of that C. So it's just two notes repeating all the time. Let's try five. You can try seven, eight. Remember, it still sounds odd because you've got three notes here and seven and uh, seven distribu events distributed over eight. Um, still sort of allows the pattern to not be too conventional. Let's go back to the three, eight. I mean, you could make it more, you know, nine, 15. And every time it's going to be giving you a really different kind of rhythm, right? So let's go back to three and eight, or we could say three over 15, last one. One of the things you can also do that it also has is this rotate parameter. So the rotate parameter shifts the pattern to the left. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the code. And this is why we would use panning, right? So I'm going to put one on one side and the other one on the other side. This one's going to be three, eight. 
with rotation zero and the other one is three eight but with rotation one hopefully they'll give us something See, this is why every live loop needs its own unique identifier. Because what happens is they both have the same name, so the first one is the one, it's the only one that plays, um, and the other one doesn't. So you can hear the difference. You can hear the one on the right. Here we go. So with a rotation of two, rotation of three, three is pretty much is the same as zero, because there are only three events, right? So you can see how it repeats itself. So let's make this one four and eight, rotation zero. Now they start to move away from each other, right? Rotation of one. But let's try them as a sample. Um, and let's pick one of the electro. So we'll do electro beep, bleep, blip, one. And then we'll do exactly the same up here. Get rid of these. So to all intents and purposes, we're going to be hearing the same, um, let's get numbers three, eight, and let me just change that to me too. So when they're lined up together, the it feels like we're just listening down the center channel, and when they deviate, then they sort of pan, right? So... This one that's on the right, we should hear as five. Or we're hearing it on the left. So rotation two. Every time the pattern is changing. Rotation four. Okay, now we're going to use this code and listen to what it's like in terms of drums. So the kick drum we've already listened to goes like this. gives us lots of different uh, sort of outputs because there's a certain sort of underlying randomization to this. Um, we can also vary things not just by changing um, the spread and using rotation, but we can also change the random seed. So here the this use underscore random underscore seed and here the random seed is zero. So rather than variation being because of the way we play it, we might well get variations or usable variations just by changing the random seed. I know it's difficult to just listen to a kick drum on its own and go, oh, okay, what am I listening to? Here it is with the random seed one. It's already different. So if this was random seed 120, right? Each one is each one is different. So once we've set up the parameters, we can create variations or iterations, differences, through the use of things like the random seed. So this is what the kick, snare, and hat sound like with a random seed of zero. So we've got spread being used on the kick and spread being used on the hi-hat, but not on the snare. Okay, 
So I'm going to change that to random seed of one. You can already hear a fair amount of difference between these. I'm going to use random seed of 120. This is what 1200 sounds like. different, right? That's what 12,200 sounds like. And remember that in all of this we can change, we can, we can kind of influence things, we can make it so that the spread is 1,6, let's say 4,16. Now 122,000. I mean, th this in itself is random, right? With a nine at the end, 122,009. Okay, so hopefully you're, you're kind of beginning to sort of see the applications that we could use something like this. Until next time.